Generations pass us carrying new traditions and history to the, to the next. Each time period forms a new way of life. In all three eras, they show examples of courage. They set forth a new way of life to help support themselves, their community, and most importantly, their families. My New England colony is Connecticut. Here is a picture of a teenager in colonial times. Connecticut was established in 1639 under the fundamental orders of Connecticut. I was born on March 12, 1998 in Mason City, Iowa. Mason City was established in 1866. Alice Marie Wilkins, maiden name Alice Marie Foxen, my grandmother, was born on September 2, 1932 in Osage, Iowa. A Dutch navigator named Adrian Block was the first person on record to explore the Connecticut area. He sailed up the Connecticut River in 1614. Soon after, in 1633, Dutch, Dutch colonists built a fort and trading post near present-day Hartford, but soon lost control of the English Puritans from the Massachusetts Bay Colony. These three English Puritans were Winster, Westerfield, and Hartford. They united Connecticut in 1639 by coming up with the Constitution. This constitution was the first constitution in America. The fundamental orders of Connecticut extended voting rights to non-church members and limited the power of the government. Connecticut has many physical features on its landscape. There are wooded hills in the east and the west that are separated by, sep separated by central lowlands. Connecticut is home to many rivers. In the western highlands, there are two rivers named the Naugatuck and the Hoastonic. The Thames River runs through the eastern highlands. The fertile valley, valley of the Connecticut River is in the central lowlands. A coastal plain stretches through Long Island South. It has sandy beaches and good natural harbors. This coastal, this coast, these coastal parts have cooler summers and warmer winters. The interior parts have longer winters and more snowfall. More than half of Connecticut's land is covered in trees. Mason City is flat with rich soil. Our rich soil is prime for all our local farmers. We experience harsh winters that typically range from negative 20 degrees to 20 degrees. We have very hot, humid summers. Mason City has many unique and interesting historical facts. Mason City is recognized for Meredith Wilson's faith. Robert Meredith Wilson was born in Mason City in 1902. He has he had a very successful career in musical theater. He made a Broadway production after his hometown. hometown. It is called The Music Man. Later on, it became a Walt Disney movie. Meredith Wilson is honored every day at Mason City's Fan Festival. His home is still standing in downtown Mason. Mason City is also known for their famous Frank Lloyd Wright architecture. You can find many structures in Mason City that resemble his designs. My grandmother's maiden name was Alice Marie Faxon. She grew up in a country home between Osage and New Haven. New Haven is a very small town with a population of 250 people. Back then, New Haven had a grocery store, a church, and a tavern, which is what they used to call the barn. There was only one street that ran through New Haven, which was the main highway. It was very flat. She grew up with no running water or electricity. In colonial times, families were very large. On average, families had six to eight children. Their philosophy was more children met more workers. Children as young as three were expected to be useful. The boys helped look after farm animals and gathered berries and food for their families. Around age six, boys began to do their father's choice. Sons of farmers spent all day clearing land and learning important farmer techniques. Sons of crafts, craftsmen tended their father's shops and learned their father's trades. Around age 11, boys left their fathers to become an apprentice. The apprentice received food, clothing, a general education, and logic. He would work for free until his contract was fulfilled. Girls learned how to sew and other useful household skills from their mother. At age 13 or 14, they were sent away to their households to do specializing skills such as weaving or cheese making. Orphan boys and girls worked as servants for families that fed them until adulthood.
Our society is different now than it was in colonial times. We focus more on education during our childhood rather than working all the time to help support our families. We ex are expected to be involved in helping our families maintain the house. I own the load the dishwasher, feed, and clean the dog's food bowls, and make sure my room is clean and vacuumed. In my grandmother's time, she would help look after their farm. On occasion, she would skip school to help out with work that was to be done at home. Every day, she was expected to feed the chickens, carry coal and wood into the house to help keep it warm, milk cows, and any other farm chore that was needed that day. Since colonial, since colonial Connecticut is was full of forest, their main source of income came by transporting timber. There were four social classes back in colonial times. In the highest class, people worked as landowners, church officials, government officials, and wealthy merchants. In upper middle class, people were farmers and clerks that owned their own shop. The lower middle class consists of renters and unskilled workers. Servants and slaves belonged to the lowest class. Today, today we have a lot of unemployment. Unemployment is 8.8% underemployment plus the people that quit looking for jobs equals over 16%. Food prices rose over 8% in 2011 and still continue to rise. Our deficit, how much our country owes other countries, is at an all-time high. We owe more than what we take in. 40 cents of every dollar the government spends is borrowed money. Luckily, I have two parents that have good jobs that are able to support our families. They were in a depression in 1930s. The government provided a job for families that did not have an income. The job was for people that were able to repair roads and rebuild roads for the community. These workers were called WPA workers. There was also rationing because the World War II was going on. Each family had a book of stamps to use at the store for milk, meat, sugar, and bread. After their stamps were all used, they could no longer buy those items from the store. Her family's main source of income was her dad. Her dad did carpentry work and also was a farmer. Mom stayed home and took care of the family. Overall, they were very poor, but they had each other to help them get through the depression.